Welcome. In this video, we're going to wrap up the material about conjugate multi-object tracking algorithms. In the multi-Bernoulli mixture filter, we have an MBM density. In the prediction, we have the surviving objects and add burst Bernoullis. In the update, we have both misdetected and detected objects. And in the reduction step, we reduce the posterior MBM density so that we have a reasonable computational cost for the tracking filter. Similarly, in the PMBM filter, we have a PMBM density. And now we have a Poisson point process part for the undetected objects and a multi Bernoulli mixture part for the detected objects. In the prediction, we have surviving detected objects and surviving undetected objects. And we add birth intensity to the Poisson point process for the undetected objects. In the update, we have undetected objects that remain undetected. And then we have objects detected for the first time, which then become new detected Bernoullis. And for the detected objects, we have both misdetections and detections. And lastly, in the reduction step, we reduce both the Poisson point process and the multi Bernoulli mixture. And we can also do recycling of some of the Bernoullis. So which type of filter should we use? Which is recommended? Well, to answer this question, we compare multi Bernoulli mixture and Poisson multi Bernoulli mixture in both simulations and experiments, where we measure the computational cost. For example, the average time for one cycle of prediction, update and reduction, or the total time that it takes to process all data in a scenario. And we measure the tracking performance using the GOSPA metric, which measures the localization error, the number of false objects, and the number of missed objects. So here we can see some results from three different scenarios, where we compare the performance for PMBM, MBM, and MBM01. And note that in each scenario, each tracking filter was used for different values of the maximum number of hypotheses. And as you can see, PMBM filters generally have lowest computational costs, and tracking performance is often better for PMBM filters. This is especially true in complicated scenarios. So hence, we recommend using PMBM filters. Now, in addition to being computationally efficient and having good tracking performance, PMBM filters also have the benefit of an explicit representation of undetected objects, which we will give an example of now. In these two figures, we have two cars that have been tracked using 2D LiDAR, illustrated in orange. And as you can see, one car is occluded by the other, meaning that from the sensor's point of view, it's located behind the other car. This type of occlusion can be modeled by the probability of detection, which is illustrated here as reddish brown for a probability of detection close to one, and white for a probability of detection close to zero. And as expected, the probability of detection is close to zero behind the cars and close to one everywhere else where there is no occlusion. So if an area remains occluded for a longer period of time, there is an increasing probability that some undetected objects might be located there. On the right, you can see a comparison of the car estimate in orange and the ground truth in blue. And as we can see, we have a fairly accurate estimate, even though the car is fully occluded. So if an area remains occluded for a longer period of time, there is also an increasing probability that some undetected objects might be located there. Here we have some data from a 2D LiDAR, which is illustrated with different colors for different time steps. Blue is the early time steps, red is later. And a couple of pedestrians have walked around in the surveillance area. So this sensor is susceptible to the same type of occlusions as we just saw. And we can model these using a non-homogeneous probability of detection, PD. And if we do so, we can track objects even while they are occluded. And we can represent where undetected objects are likely to be located. So as you can see, in this data, one pedestrian stands still for a longer period of time in the middle of the field of view, which means that the area behind this person is occluded for a longer time. So let's first have a look at the detected objects, starting the movie just after the first pedestrian enters the field of view. So this movie is shown at about five times speed up. And as you can see, one of the pedestrians repeatedly moves behind the other through an occluded area. This happens quite quickly on the screen due to the speed up, 
But even so, if the tracking algorithm had not modeled the probability of detection as non-homogeneous, there would have been a considerable risk of losing track of this pedestrian while they are occluded. Let's also have a look at the undetected intensity for the same data. As long as the pedestrians are moving, no area is occluded long enough for there to be any significant probability of undetected objects. However, as soon as the pedestrian stands still, we can see how the undetected intensity behind them increases until it reaches a stationary value. So even though this is a fairly small example, we hope that it illustrates that it can be quite useful to have an explicit model for undetected objects, like the PMBM filter does. And finally, as we have mentioned several times earlier, it's also possible to do multi-Bernoulli mixture merging. In fact, quite often this gives an even better tracking performance. Multi-Bernoulli mixture merging means that we approximate a multi-Bernoulli mixture density with a multi-Bernoulli density. One variant to do this is track-oriented merging, which is relatively simple. Another way is to do variational merging, which minimizes the kullback leibler divergence between the multi-Bernoulli mixture and the multi-Bernoulli approximation. This is a bit more complicated, but generally it gives a much better tracking performance. And the resulting tracking algorithms are often called PMB and MBM filters. However, unfortunately, this is outside the scope of this course, but we encourage you to look into this if you're interested. Great, that was the end of multi-object tracking using conjugate priors. In the next and final part of this course, we will give some outlooks into what you can do with tracking beyond what you've been taught here. Now you can go ahead and work on the quiz questions and the MATLAB assignments.